I wrote Merchant Soldier Sage because I wanted to understand why it was proving so difficult to escape this crisis. And most books on the economic crisis so far have been written by economists, they're about banks, they're about economic policy. I wanted to look at this from a broader historical perspective because we've had these crises before and history can give us some guides as to how to escape from them and what's likely to happen from now on. Yes, I wanted to challenge two influential views of our history. The first, a liberal one, and the second, a Marxist one. Now, according to the liberal view, history is really about progress towards markets and democracy. And yes, 2008 was a, a crisis, but it was a sort of blip on the way to that, caused really by moral defects, by greedy bankers, say, or by feckless borrowers, depending on your political position. Now, the other view is a Marxist view, that what we are seeing is the beginning of the end of capitalism itself. Now, it seems to me that neither of these really work. The Marxist view doesn't work because capitalism really is still flourishing in parts of the world, in China and in India, for instance. It has quite a long way to go. Whereas the liberal view doesn't really work either because this is more than a moral problem. It's a structural problem. What I argue is we're not seeing a crisis of capitalism as a whole, but the crisis of a particular socio-economic ideological order, what I call a merchant order that's been dominant since the 1980s. Merchants or traders are a social group, or a caste as I call them, who have existed throughout history. They emphasise flexibility, seeking the highest profit wherever they can find it, innovation and networking. And they're rather different from more technocratic or managerial capitalists, what I call a more sagely type of capitalist, the sort of capitalist you find among industrialists. Merchants haven't always been so dominant. As I show in my history, which is really a history of the ancient, medieval and modern periods, other castes have often been more powerful, have generally been more powerful, like soldier aristocrats in the medieval period, technocrat sages and workers to some extent in the post-war period. But often these caste orders come to an end in crisis and what we often see is a sort of zigzag pattern as one caste order comes to crisis and another caste takes over in its wake. In many periods, merchants have been too weak. Merchants have values which are useful. They promote peaceful trade, they promote economic growth, but they can also promote instability and inequality and that often leads to economic crisis as we've seen recently. Well this happened last in the 1920s when the United States backed a new market-friendly international world order. They promoted international banks, freeing up trade, rolling back the state, very similar really to the 1990s and 2000s. And the result was really rather similar to 2008. 1929 the, saw the Wall Street crash and a very long depression after that. So in, in many ways we've been here before. Merchants have been dominant really for three big reasons. The first is that merchant dominated institutions like the international banks have had a lot of power in the global economy. States have given up power to banks. Secondly, many of us have had to internalise merchant values. More and more of us, even in the public sector, work in market friendly institutions. We've, we, we have market culture everywhere and so we've had to uh, absorb those values. And thirdly, I think we're being ruled today by a generation that experienced the crisis of the 1970s and 80s, my generation, and they are still learning those lessons. They're still stuck in that period. They're learning the lessons of a period when the technocrats were too powerful. Well, the experience of the 1930s isn't very encouraging. After 1929, it took about 15 years for a new stable caste order, the post-war order, to be created. And in the meantime, politics became extremely polarised between left and right, particularly over the issue that concerns us today, who should pay back the debt. And that politics then led to the return of the warrior, if you like, a militarised politics on both left and right. Of course, in Germany, that really helped the militarised right, Hitler. 
And it took the deaths of some 60 million in a world war and the rise of a new generation that had learned the lessons of the 1930s before a new stable caste order emerged. Actually, the crisis is not as bad as it was in the 1930s, and to be fair, it has been managed better than it was then. But I think we're still seeing rather worrying signs. We're seeing polarisation of politics between left and right, and we're finding the rise of a new radical nationalist right, both in Europe and in the United States. And our rulers still find it very difficult to appreciate that we need a structural change in the economy. We can't just deal with the problem through Keynesian spending, we need a real curtailment of merchant power, particularly in the sense of a restriction of the power of global finance. And what we need is a much more balanced economy. We can't go back to the 70s, but we need a greater balance between merchant, sage and worker, combining the market with a more technocratic long-term view and with greater equality. We can only hope that history doesn't repeat itself, that we don't have to endure another cataclysm before we learn the real lessons of 2008.